Know how is good, know who is better. When we survey middle class folks, they tell us that technical skills, getting a good education, being well educated in something, is the way that they will create wealth. Um, and you know, we, for a lot of reasons, we find that that's not the case. Interesting, uh, when we survey um, high net worth people, very successful self-made millionaires, A, they tell us education is not important to success. B, they use this very funny word, and they use it in exactly the same way as the middle class, but the tone of voice is entirely different, which is the word luck. So middle class people will tell you that successful self-made people are lucky that they were in the right place at the right time. And what they're kind of suggesting is that uh, it shouldn't have happened to them. Very successful people will tell you, tell you the same thing, that they're lucky that they were in the right place at the right time. But it's not without intention. They built the situation where luck would fall their way. And that happens through network development. So, you know, networking is considered a four-letter word to a lot of people. It's just considered a, a smarmy activity, you know, that that uh, like a snake oil salesman does. But successful people know that networking is a highly curated, thoughtful network is a very hard thing to build and it can be a very powerful tool. So when they say that luck is more powerful than education, they're saying know who is better than know how. And the examples of that are, are really powerful that building a network of people who need each other but don't know each other puts you in a position to create money and opportunity. Um, and we talked about Steve Jobs before. Steve Jobs, arguably, his, his greatest strength was the fact that he had the ability to speak to creative people who wanted new tools to develop music, to develop art, to write, to create movies and moving images. And he also had the ability to talk to technical people, geeks, you know, coders, product developers in the world of computers. And he built an entire business the business that went on to become the biggest business in the world, by standing at the intersection of two groups of people who needed each other. The artists needed the technical people, the technical people needed the artists, and by standing in between them, because he was able to speak to these two groups and they didn't speak to each other, he created Apple. So that's, is that luck? Sort of. But at the same time, it's a, it's a highly cultivated and curated lucky moment. At a much smaller level, you can do many of these same things, and the thing is you have to know a lot about the motivations of the people you work with. We kind of come back into that research comment. You have to spend time to understand what's important to other people. That's hard to do anyway because a lot of folks network, but they don't ask the hardest questions like, what are you trying to do with your life? How much money are you trying to make this year? How can I help you make it? Do I have to drive three new opportunities to you to help you make that? You know, they have to take the time to know those people. And the reason why the number is small is really just a function of our own, our own capacity for intimacy. You can't have trusted, intimate relationships with 10 or 20 people. You can only have trusted, intimate relationships with a few. So we found the number, you know, hovers between five, really between four and six, but five is, let's say that's the number. And in a world where social media numbers are measured in the thousands, um, and the idea that you have a thousand friends, and I love that word that Facebook uses, that they're your friends. You know, honestly, of course, uh, I say this tongue in cheek, but do you really have any intimacy with those 5,000 people? Of course not. They're not really friends. They're um, an outreach list for you. They're a database. Friends or intimate business contacts are very different. The level to which very successful people take the time to understand the motivations of the people in their network is many, many times greater than that of the folks who, uh, who, are, who remain in the middle class. That intimacy, that network is uh, curated carefully and it does lead to luck. And that's why luck is so important.